So floods are our country's most costly natural disasters. Climate change is worsening this crisis. Sea levels are rising, severe storms are becoming more frequent. And as a result, our floodplains are spreading and putting more people at risk every year. By 2050, one in every 10 properties in Massachusetts is projected to face a substantial risk of flooding. In Boston, it's even higher at 30%. And in communities like Hull, Massachusetts, more than two thirds of properties will be at risk. Now, the National Flood Insurance Program, NFIP, is designed to help homeowners in at-risk areas rebuild after a flood, but that is really only part of the picture. It's also a tool to prevent and mitigate the damage to our community before the flood hits, including making sure that we have the right infrastructure to protect property from rising water levels. Ms. Smith, study after study tells us that it pays to prepare. For every dollar the government invests in disaster mitigation, we get about $6 in return on that investment. So let me just ask you, are we spending enough on efforts to lower the long-term risk of loss from floods? Senator, thank you for that important question. And the answer is no, not by a long shot. Uh, there, we've been stingy in pre-disaster planning and investment, and that ends up cost, costing us in damages, not just to property, but in lives and livelihoods. And NIBS, the folks who give you the six to one number, that they have recently said that our nation's disaster investment gap now exceeds 520 billion. Wow. And now that's that's all disasters, but flood is a big chunk of that. Yeah. So we need better building and we need more investment. You know, communities in your state are trying to help people elevate. Um, we need projects like, for example, the Charles River project that the Army Corps did years and years ago, um, preserving eight, thousands of acres of wetlands has paid benefits in reduced damages. Right, that, that is very helpful, thank you. You know, a recent study found that only about 1% of properties insured by the NFIP suffered repeated losses. And yet these properties account for more than 30% of claim payments. So we have to find ways to make these properties and the floodplains and coastlines where these homes are located more resilient or the NFIP will never be sustainable. So beyond restoring and protecting our natural infrastructure, we can also protect against flood losses by investing in our physical infrastructure, like strengthening building codes, elevating buildings, as you mentioned, uh, moving costly HVAC units to higher floors. Uh, Mr. Bergenes, do you agree that if the NFIP is ever going to be self-sustaining, the federal government's going to have to dramatically increase funding for physical infrastructure, such as uh, water resource projects and robust funding of the Army Corps of Engineers uh, that helps build this infrastructure? Uh, yes, Senator Warren, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and it really, when you look at our national mit flood mitigation approach and the investments in infrastructure. I think multiple agencies have pieces of this, right? The Corps of Engineers tends to do the larger flood control projects and they definitely have a role as, as the panel, as many folks have said, the situation, especially on the coast is only gonna get worse. But then FEMA has a role too, in terms of investing, mm -hmm. especially in particular, more building by building and smaller mitigation projects and even Agencies like the Department of Agriculture uh, through conservation programs and things, they have a role too. So I think when we when we do all of those together, we need to we need to triple down on our investment in in terms of um, uh, infrastructure and resiliency. That's that is very helpful. Thank you. Climate change is the biggest threat to NFIP programs and to the families that rely on this program to insure their homes. So we have to remember that NFIP is just one of the tools the government has to protect communities 
from the immediate and catastrophic impact of climate change. A big piece of this is addressing climate change head on, and that means ending our dependency on fossil fuels and investing in renewable energy and coastal restoration in natural resiliency. And until we get serious about canceling climate, uh, tackling climate change, we're gonna be treating NFIP as a bottomless bucket that we can never refill fast enough. Now is the time to act. So thank you all very much for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the absence of the chairman, I think Senator Kennedy is up next. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Yes. 